Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas, and we're here today to do a video on a comparison between the ESOB 210 and the ESOB 210 EMP. So we got just the MIG machine, and then we have the multi-process machine. So an EMP, and then EM, just standard MIG, and then this has a three-in-one, so MIG, TIG, and stick out of this unit. So in this video, we're going to go over the differences, price point, and where we want to choose between either one. So in another video that we're going to post below, link below, we ran this unit, we MIG welded with it, awesome little machine for $10.99. Price point, it's perfect if you're just going to get into MIG welding. So when ESOP launched this, they also launched a 3-in-1 unit. So this unit on, on my right here will do MIG, TIG, and stick. And you can see the interfaces on them are very similar on the face panels. Um, this one just shows two other processes as compared to this one. Um, so basically the same box, same everything, just different panels on there. So let's, let me turn on this unit. Now this unit here, we got hooked up to 230 volt. So I'll flip it on. As you can see on the back, let me show this again, I'll show it in the last video. But, so on this unit right here, we have a selector switch for our 120 volt or 230 volt on off gas inlet. So we're on 230, so I flipped it to 230. It doesn't have an auto feature on that, but that's where the price point comes into play. That's where it's saving you some money because it doesn't have that technology. So this unit right here, like I said, the MIG only, 10.99, MIG, TIG, and stick is 13.99. So for 300 more bucks, you get two other processes. So I'll come around front here, and walk through what this thing has. So we have it hooked up for TIG welding. We're gonna give that a shot because it's lift arc only. Um, so through the process selector here, you can just, it's just a one simple click and it toggles down. You can see a nice LCD screen. It's all digital display. Whereas competitors like the Hobart or Harbor Freight or the Hobart Handler, that sort of thing, no digital display. It's all analog knob. Um, so you kind of have to convert over or know what numbers and letters, all that stuff means. So this one gives you a true number. So voltage, wire feed speed, amperage. So we're gonna go up to the MIG setting. So units at 26 volt, I was in, and 450 inches a minute on the wire feed speed. Pretty awesome little depiction. It'll also spool gun compatible for ESOM. So we can put a spool gun in this unit and run aluminum on that side of things. So we'll toggle down, we'll go down the stick, gives you your voltage and your amperage output there. And the next one we got hooked up for TIG. So we'll toggle down one more. So it's just gonna give us amps. So max output on these units, 200 amps, all the way down to, let's see what it goes, down to eight amps. So pretty amazing uh, on the low end of things, right? Because we can do thinner gauge material, especially stainlesses, that sort of thing. Now this is not AC output TIG, so it's DC only. Can't weld aluminum with it. But as I said before, you can go right up to 200 amps. Now on 110, 110 volt, you're limited to 140 amps on this unit. So it's not going to give you as much on 110, but we're hooked up to 220. So let's fire over. Let's see. So on this, on the EM series, as I toggled through that screen, it had a kind of a secret menu will hold, push and hold. And this one has it as well. So it's the same features. It's just so it gives you run in. We can change our run in value on our MIG side. Pre gas flow, we can adjust that. This factory set at zero, but that's our pre-gas flow on our MIG. This is burn back, so it's 0.01. You can just turn it up just a little bit. Um, burn back is the feature at the very end when you let go of the trigger. It's going to put a little bit more amperage voltage to that wire to burn it back, so you're not sticking it to the plate. And that, that screen times out, that secret screen. And then you got your post-gas flow, which is just an adjustment to shield your weld pole after the arc is extinguished. So here we go, toggles out. There's no secret menu on the stick welding, so you can't really change anything on the stick. It's just it, it, just your amperage, and it just gives you your voltage output. TIG, on the other hand, let's see if there's a menu on that. There's no menu on that either. So we're just going to tell you there's no secret menu on that sort of thing. Now hop over to this side. Um, it's going to toggle through. Oh, hold on. I messed that up. Hang on. So go back over to MIG here. And on this side, the menu starts to work. 
So we got our trigger setting. So we've got a two tap or a four tap trigger. You can see we can change that. There's no other secret menu in there, but we're gonna keep it at two tap. And then this is our inductance setting. It's gonna go from one to nine. Now that's on the MIG side only. We're gonna go back down to five. We'll hop down into two, we'll wait for the screen to clear there. We'll hop down the stick. Now you can see there's no, no special features on the right hand side for stick either. Go down the TIG and that's our foot control off or on. So the remote, so we don't have a foot control, but today we have our, we're just going to lift our, it is foot control compatible. So you can unplug this essentially, unplug that, plug your foot control in and what you have to do is turn it to FC. So that stands for foot control, but we don't have that. So we're going to turn it off today and then we'll just run our hand control. So let's get this thing set up for TIG and uh, we'll give it a whirl. All right, so we got the TIG torch hooked up. We're in the DENS connection. We got our remote control hooked up. So we, we're, we're doing a scratch start. We don't have a foot pedal here today. So, but I also changed my trigger sequence to four tap. So one tap is on and another tap is off. So I, I just like it better when I'm TIG welding because I, then I can control the pump a little bit more. I don't have to worry about holding on to the trigger the entire time. But it's a lift arc or scratch start style TIG. So, Let's give it a shot here. I got a little piece of 316. So I got 120 amps on it. Um, now remember, turn your gas valve on because it doesn't have a gas solenoid. And then just give it a shot. Don't, don't do this. It's got a real smooth arc. Um, might have needed a little bit more amperage, but once it got going and flowing, it, it ran really nice. Um, I remember shut your gas valve off after the fact. Um, so we're at 120 amps. And this thing, like I said, it'll go all the way up to 200 amps on TIG. Pretty sweet little unit um, for three and one. You know, it's not bad at the price point of $13.99. Plus it's gonna fall on that ball, the ball game of all those competitive equipment at Harbor Freight, that sort of thing, Forney equipment, uh, Clark, whatever else stuff is out there that's on the lower end, but it's backed by a three-year warranty from ESOB, a very reputable company, and they make awesome machines. But what I want to do to finish out this video is kind of give you a, a rundown on a comparison with another machine. If you were going to launch in, so this is called $1,400 you wanted to step up or you were on the fence on what do I need? Do I want the 210 or the 215? So I'm going to explain the difference what what you get more with the 215 than uh, compared to the 210. So you can notice the first thing right out of the gate is the screen. So this has a TFT screen. So it's all LCD color display, really pretty nice. A lot more program features on the 215. On-demand fan, whereas this one the fan's on 100% of the time. This has an auto selection on voltage, so whatever you plug it into, it automatically recognizes it. You don't, there's no switch on the back. It's got gas solenoids through it. It's it's a awesome little piece of equipment, but it's $1,400 more than the MP210. So I guess if you're on the fence and you're just a beginner, brand new to the world of welding, but you you know you have your heart set on a three-in-one unit. I'd go with the 1399 unit, the MP210, because entry level, it's walking in there, it's giving you everything you need to know or need to have to begin TIG welding, MIG welding, or stick welding. But if you want a more advanced, a little bit more duty cycle, a little bit more efficient power-wise, right? So on the draw, power draw, um, a little bit more, more programs to play with, a little bit more advanced technology, that sort of thing, the MP215 is probably where you should be at. Now, I know there's a $1,400 difference between the two, which is substantial because this unit is only $1,400 to begin with. It's just, it, this one would go into a home hobby 
garage setting, probably not an outdoor unit at all, but can be run on a generator. This unit was developed for outdoor use. It's IP3, IP23 rated, um, it's drop tested, it's got the roll cage designed to be out rugged industrial settings or even home hobby and settings, but it, it's meant more for the field and everybody else. You know, the, the, the Rebel line has been successful out in the field. This unit would not be good out in the field, the MP210. So just to break that classification between the two, not saying these are cheap by any means. They're very nice machines put together very nice. It's just an in it more inexpensive unit to compete with all the other ones that are coming out there. Plus it's backed by a company that we know came out with the Rebel line, the 205 that does awesome things on AC output, the EMP 215 that you can run 045 flux core wire in this unit and it runs it awesome. So it, it's it, the same company that built this is now building this. I'm not knocking anything. These, these are great units. It's just, there's a dividing line. Where do I want to go? So you got some questions to ask yourself down the line where you want to be at, what you want to do is welding wise. If you're going to excel through and want to get to this unit, this isn't a bad unit to start out with just to get your feet wet and figure out what you want to do. So all in all, thanks again for watching my video. If you got any questions, comments, anything, leave them all below. We're going to link some other videos below too that went over the MIG process on the EM210. And then um, don't be afraid though. Ask questions and we'll be here to help. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more.